<sighs> just got done with a meeting and I got another meeting and I have another meeting about a meeting that's coming up. So I have no time to do anything. And the crazy part about this is that that's how yesterday and today was. Now, if I'm describing something that sounds like your schedule, well, that's the new normal that we're in. Back to back to back to back meetings, virtual off, virtual on. And the problem is, is that it's impacting the way you're selling. Today, we're going to talk about that. We're going to give you some ideas. and We're going to give you a strategy that you can apply right now to fix that problem. And it doesn't include quitting or not doing any work at all. I know some of you have ideas on that. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, we have a fantastic guest, man. We're going to be talking about this, this idea of getting some... You, you can't do it all. Like, there's just... It's absolutely impossible for us to just think that as a sales professional, that we can just go in there and that we can just make it happen and we can do everything. And I think sometimes we feel that we're superheroes and some of us may be in some aspects. But when it comes towards our health, we need to take some time for that. Gina Tremarco and I, we're going to talk about this concept. We're going to talk about what sellers can do right now in this unique environment where we have some online meetings, we have offline meetings, we have a combination of everything tied back to back to back. And it's not that healthy when it comes towards us physically, but also to our company and to our pipeline. If this is the first time watching one of our episodes, I ask you to go ahead and hit subscribe. If you're listening to this podcast, please subscribe and leave us a rating and reviewing review. At least consider doing it. What is the detriment though? Like, let's go back to what you're seeing. How is this inhibiting success or is it at all is it counterintuitive in it, some ways? It, it is counterintuitive it is affecting us you know something one thing that we teach at, at sales gravy when it comes to a virtual selling perspective like you know like limit how much time you're actually on zoom per, per se right like what's an average time you would say oh, like we shouldn't be on more than four hours a day right the, the zoom fatigue that kicks in the cognizant overload on your brain right your brain on zoom the, the fatigue that's going to happen from that is far more intense than and there's a low impact when you like you say you're binging on Netflix for yeah. a variety of reasons. Um, but then when you're meeting after meeting after meeting, that's starting to impact your brain and, and, and the, what your brain's capable of doing. Or when you're going meeting after meeting and you're not taking a break in between. Yeah. Right. I've been guilty of that where I go, I go from meeting to meeting podcast to podcast without a break and I'm backing it up like okay hey I'll be there but five minutes late because I'm ending another meeting to get on this meeting and I have no time for my brain to like settle in process rest and the fatigue is kicking in so I'm not fully with you yeah right like I am fully with you today because I did have <laughs> I did have like a, a window but I've started to create the window of of having the break before I get on the next thing so I think it's definitely a detriment and people don't realize it yeah leadership leadership doesn't realize it i think they're going to start to see it happen when things start to slip um you said this idea of like physically putting taking get rid of the white space on your calendar but putting things that are there that are not it's a slot for nothing Internally, I just put block on it on my calendar so they know like if there's a space, I'm like block, one hour block and I can use that time for Donald time. Talk to me about yeah, that. Yeah, I, um, I, I just went onto my calendar to do that um, and I'm pretty good at doing it usually. But because I've been running into some issues where I'm getting challenged, like, you know, I, 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 I answer that, but a quick tangent, you know, someone on my team is like, hey, um, I need you to jump on a call with this prospect of mine, you know, because we do a lot of piggybacking like that to help each other. And um, I see you're with a client until 10 on site. And then the next thing on your calendar says drive time. Because I literally block drive time. You have drive time. Yeah. Is there a way that we could have the call during your drive time? Right? And I was like, um, yeah, sh uh, yeah, 
celebrate. Like you just get into a habit of like, sure. She's like, you don't, you don't have to be on camera. I'm like, okay, yeah. And I'm like, what, what did I just do? Because I'm like, my brain is coming out of a training session for three hours and I'm getting in the car. Why am I getting on a call? I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't be doing that. So I'm like, I need to respect my own boundaries. Like it says drive time. So it should have more details. Drive time. Will not talk to anybody. Do anything. Do not bother me. Like I literally, I need to do that. Not just for everybody else looking at my calendar, but for myself. So I literally, after that happened, I'm like, I went back into my calendar. I looked at all the blocks where I'm training or coaching. And I said, okay. I blocked out an hour before and an hour after all of those things. And it just says Gina and a Gina, not available period of the story. I can choose later to become available, but if I don't put that on there, I won't respect my own boundary. And I just have a tendency to be like, okay, let's do it. And it's not healthy. And, and I'm feeling the pain of it and it's impacting me in a negative way. What about those leaders and the reps who are listening to this and say, that's just weak sauce, you know, sellers are just like weak sauce doing that. You know, you got to hustle, you got to grind and, and all that stuff. What would you say to those people? Um, you know, you have to say, you don't have to say anything to them, but I'm just making conversation. Here. I mean, I, I would say, um, you know, always be looking for new sales reps, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, you, you, uh, you want to get the most out of your team. Yeah. Right. Um, You're always we all we know we're always going to have someone on the team who's got an excuse for everything. But if you have I mean, I grind, you grind, I grind hard Mm -hmm. and I produce. And if you see I'm starting to have some cracks in my foundation, you should pay attention to it because, you know, I produce. And if all of a sudden I'm having problems, pay attention to that and, and find a way to support that and say, hey, what's going on? Yeah. Right. So I, you know, if you call it weak sauce, then I don't think you're that great of a leader. And then the last question, what would you say to the leader who is listening to this? Who was like, all right, you got me. This is the other one. I agree with you on this, Gina. Donald, this grabbed my attention. How? What's the first thing? What's one thing that they can leave off of this call and do right now to help their team? Or if they're a sales rep, they're not in leadership. But one thing they can leave off the call right now and start doing to regain this in, in the, the I would say, you know, get with your team and see how they're doing. Like, that's a simple, like, hey, how's it going? You know, we're, we're in this new, uh, yet another new normal of balancing everything. How's that balancing act feeling for you right now? And, and give them a space to talk about it because so many times leaders don't do that. A, because they're too busy. Um, your team might not come to you because they don't want you to see them as weak. So they're like, I can do it all. I mean, I'm one of those people. I can do it all until I can't do it all. So I would, I would open that door and say, Hey, how's it going? I would also, as a leader, start looking, you know, let's talk numbers. Yeah. Like let's start looking at numbers. Is there a decline in productivity in sales and closing? Um, what do the numbers look like? Cause the numbers talk, right? If you start seeing yeah. a decline, Why is that happening? Is there something that's going on in that person's schedule that is really having a severe impact on them? Plus there's the personal aspect of it, right? Your, your team, it's not just your team. It's your team's family members. What's going on with their families because they're going through their own stuff. Their spouses also are impacted by this new normal and their children are impacted by that. And so now you have this like crazy triple quadruple impact of it all. So um, I would look at the numbers and, you know, it's a combination to be like, you know, soft and fuzzy and look at the numbers. Gina, folks out there listening want to get a hold of you, want to connect with Sales Gravy and some of the great things that you guys are doing, or just to connect with you because you're an awesome human. How did it go about doing that? Super simple. You can find me um, on the Sales Gravy website, or you can email me at Gina, G-I-N-A, at Sales Gravy. I'm all over social media. You can't miss me. Uh, You see me on the Insta with you, so I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. Uh, I even have a website, GinaTramarco.com. So uh, you can find me everywhere. Or hey, text me. 843-597-6300.
Oh, sookie, sookie now. Look at that. Gina came and delivered and she shared some great information. If you'd like to get connected with Gina, Sales Gravy, and all the cool stuff that she's doing, you can find the link down below in the show notes. If you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and go down into the description and take advantage of some of the information that we have there. I, I encourage you, I implore you to follow her and connect with her and learn from her. In addition to that, I want you to also check out her podcast, check out the episode that I did with her and her co-host. You can find that down there below as well in the show notes. I am appreciative of you. I'm appreciative of Gina coming out and i want you to be able to take the time to create your own headspace make that time for you your mental capacity your capability your emotional health is important because that's going to impact your physical capabilities of what you're doing Um, whether you like to read or you like to bike or you like to chill or go ride uh, if you have a horse or whatever go do whatever you need to do but make sure you take some time for yourself it's important i want you to sell the more you the most you can but i want you to do it effectively and do it wise do that be a wise wise steward of yourself Anyways, I do this because I want to help you. I want you to succeed. I want you to find more of those ideal customers. I tell you about sponsors like this who give us amazing offers and give us amazing deals because I want you to thrive. Check out the sponsors and the, the great things that they're giving us, uh, the great things that they're they're offering. Um, take advantage of those offers and for you and for your team. But try it, try it, try it, try it, test it. Take the opportunity to apply the things that Gina shared today and see if it doesn't make a difference in your sales. I want you to be able to thrive. I want you to find more ideal customers. I want you to know what to say when you reach out to them. I want you to close more deals. But most importantly, I want you to go out each and every single day and do big things. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a good one.